Hey, m Nation, Jason, back with you, back with one of my early flight mentors, Joel, very good friend, controller Bob down here. Continuing, last week we spoke about IFR clearances. I had an idea as we were talking. Bob, I'm going to blame you on this one, okay? Because it's mostly... I, I blame him all the time. He blames me all the time, it, right. It's his type of people. What are you doing up there? <laughs> I plan, and we teach this in our online ground school, this beautiful IFR cross-country. Right. I look at the preferred routing. I've got the right altitudes. I've got, I spelled all the fixes right. Everything is perfect. And then I write down my craft, and I get my clearance, or even better, I make it to the whole short line, and Tower goes, wait a second, so-and-so approach has an amendment to your clearance. Contact ground. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What I mean, talk about from your perspective, you do some really long IFR cross countries, Joel. You have to have a ton of reroutes. Yeah, I've had the the most reroutes I've had was six. Six. Go and that was to... from Jacksonville to Teterboro. Yeah. So you go into Norfolk, they'll give you a reroute mm -hmm. for whatever their airspace is going on. Yeah. And then you get into Potomac Approach and they'll give you a reroute. Right. Depending on what airspace. And these are in. these fixes, you're trying to figure out how to spell them and right. everything oh, else. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Back then it was J roots, but now it's all yeah. the, the fixes, and um, or they send you to a weird VOR, Dupont VOR. Yeah, well, I didn't know where Dupont yeah, was. Well, it's down. next to Philadelphia. Right. Um, and then when you get to Philadelphia, they have their own way of doing things. Right. And what was confusing to me is I'm cruising along at eighteen thousand feet, and all of a sudden they want me at six. Yeah. And wow. I'm like, I'm 250 miles from where I need to be. <laughs> yeah. And at 17,000 feet, I burn 60 gallons of fuel. Well, uh, at 6,000 feet, I burn a th uh, 100 gallons of fuel yeah, per hour. Yeah. So you, you have to think about that. But they take you into over Philadelphia at 6,000 feet mm -hmm. and on up to Teterboro yeah. because that's what New York wants because the air airplanes that are coming out are going to higher altitudes. Sure. So they duck you, the turboprops, in underneath. Uh -huh. And... Um, since then, I don't take I take a co-pilot with me because yeah, it's it. hard to fly the airplane, do a reroute, and that's back when I was using charts. That's right. before I, you know yeah, the iPad. iPad so I'm I'm like figuring so out. Yeah, spell that intersection for me. Yeah, and all Bob, why why do you want to reroute us? So, Is it to check our spelling? Is it what do you as a controller <laughs> like what? Because there's no pronunciation guy for some waypoints. Not exactly. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the reality is that each facility has their requirements of how they need airplanes fed to them and how they want them flowing through the airspace. So as you get further to the north, somebody down one side of the country would not know the requirements of, in your case, Norfolk or Potomac or Charlotte approach. Right. Everybody's we got would their own. know. I certainly don't know. Mm -hmm. So I'm perfectly fine with direct Teterboro, but as you get further <laughs> up the line, <laughs> somebody's going to have a problem with that, and that's where you start getting any root. So Charlotte may say to the person feeding them, I need them this direction. And so then they'll issue the instruction before you get to Charlotte. Charlotte will say, I don't care what happens further up the line, and then but somebody up there does. And so that's where you end up getting a reroute. So the question is, why wouldn't there be a master reroute so that you would have some better way of planning it so you don't spend 20 minutes doing this beautiful route yeah. and then see it basically turn into garbage? Right. And the answer is, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> yes. It's just, unfortunately, the way the system operates. I right. wish I had the master plan, but there is, it's just unfortunate, you know, the way that works. It's a lot of agencies trying to work together. There's a lot of facilities with their yeah. own unique requirements that yeah. require certain things. And, then, and in response to your question about, I'm 250 miles away and I need you down at 6,000 feet, if you look at the big picture, it's not about your fuel boom. We're interested in flowing airplanes the most efficiently possible. Right. And so the, if they're more of this airplane than that airplane, then they would necessarily, this flow is more important at this altitude, and we need to get you tucked underneath there because the alternative would not be workable. So right. that's the whole purpose for that. Unfortunately, fuel burn could be a problem in that regard. When, mm -hmm. And when you're going to, to the legs of four hours, an extra 40 or 50 gallons oh, pulls yeah. me it's, into my it reserve. Just, and, it, and unfortunately, you may not know the that's going to occur and you have that's why there are reserves on board and you have to make other alternative plans but there is um it's interesting because there is a bigger picture in play and unfortunately as I'm flying and you've talked me many times before we're not necessarily aware of the big picture right. so um, yeah. south florida is a perfect example flying to south florida i don't know anything about south florida and he and I are flying down there and like, what is going on? You right. know, because I had the same experience. And yeah. then Palm Beach puts you at so, four thousand uh, feet out over the swamp. Oh, yeah. oh and you're yeah. fifty at miles. Night. Yeah, right. fifty yeah. miles from where you need to be. So and I yeah. so yeah. fortunately I had the luxury of calling up one of my buddies and go, Hey, what happened? And they, they explained this, the big picture, which we're not luxury to, and I go, oh, right. makes perfect.
perfect it makes sense. sense right. once you yeah. Can see it. Okay. Well, that's cool. So, see it from yeah. that perspective. So, yeah. Super cool. There is method to the madness. Absolutely. Yeah. Always. Always. Yeah. Listen. Any questions you have for Joel or Bob? I know they'll be watching the comment section on YouTube, uh, on Facebook, on m0a.com. So ask them any questions you all have down there. Listen. Enjoy the rest of your day, and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see ya. Take a two week free trial of our online ground school and see why Aviation Consumer Magazine named it the top online ground school on the market. The first thing you'll notice is that we never teach to the test. We teach real world skills that are gonna keep you and your loved ones safe when you fly. Now it's because of this real world teaching, you'll pass your knowledge test and your check ride with flying colors. With one membership, you get access to all our courses, plus weekly webinars with myself and this outstanding M0A.com team. It's really like an interactive TV show broadcast from our studio, where you get to interact with a team of CFIs. We also offer live support and email support to make sure you succeed. Now, one thing you'll notice is that M0A is like nothing else on the market. It is truly a flight training community geared towards making you a safer, smarter pilot because a good pilot is always learning. It's much more than a slogan for us. It is truly a mission. So click below and take a two week, no strings attached trial of our top rated private instrument, commercial and FOI courses. Once you join our flight training community, I promise you will never want to leave.